Oh, well, hello there. Uh, nice of you to join me in Gadget Lab 2.0. I've gotten a number of requests to do another sort of gadget or another office tour. Uh, this is the uh, the studio, the in-home studio that we use to produce videos on some gadget guy in pocketnow.com. And I thought it would be a nice uh, return to doing a 360 degree video. The last time I did one of these types of videos, it was when Kodak put out their very first 360 degree camera. And I just thought, you know, like, why not come back to that? It'd be the easiest way to do one of these office tours because then I can just sort of ramble on in one long video and uh, look all the way around everything that's going on in the office. So uh, I'm not shooting this on a Kodak. Unfortunately, that Kodak camera hasn't come out yet. So what I'm shooting this on is an Insta360 Air. It's a little plug-in camera, a USB-C port, pops into the bottom of an Android phone, and then you have 360-degree video capabilities, which is really exciting. If you've been following this channel, I did a number of vlogs using this uh, camera out in Barcelona to cover MWC. Uh, maybe even Jaime Rivera and Anton Denage showed up in a few of those videos from the Pocket Now crew. And now uh, we can talk about Gadget Lab 2.0. I'm um, really excited. We just recently moved, or recently being relatively speaking, because when you have a kid, your definition of recently changes quite a bit. But uh, we just recently moved, and uh, these are the new sort of capabilities, the new uh, the new layout. It's a little bit smaller than the last lab, uh, but also I, I think we've made a couple improvements here so that the look of video from this uh, from this location, this studio, looks a lot better than what I was working with before. Uh, first off, I think the major, the biggest change, and I have to be careful because I think if I end up here too often, the stitching on the Insta360 gets a little funky when I'm perfectly in between the two cameras, but... If I move over here to the opposite side, um, one of the biggest changes to Gadget Lab 1.0 was the bookshelves. If you if you recall some of my older videos, if you go back to the beginning of this channel, uh, I started out with just sort of a gray wall, and that was kind of terrible, and it was really bad for audio. So one of the first improvements I made was putting up packing blankets, and for a couple years, the backgrounds of my videos were these really bad patterned moire blue packing blankets, but the audio in that place was phenomenal because there was nothing to bounce off or reflect sound. Uh, then after that I went to gray curtains, so again, a, an improvement for audio, and it was a better look for the video than the blue diagonal crisscross lines, but it was still kind of a drab look. You know, the uh, putting up a phone in front of just a slate gray curtain material just didn't look very inviting. It didn't look very good. I'm not a huge fan of trying to make gadget reviews look ultra cinematic. It's so, it's so pretty. The video is so crispy. I don't give a shit about that. But I want something more visually interesting. So in Gadget Lab 1.0, we introduced these IKEA bookshelves, these cubbies, where I can have all my little knickknacks and all of my little tchotchkes and stuff. And that was a huge improvement. That was a huge benefit. Um, but it still lacked a little kind of certain something, a little pizzazz. And so what we've introduced for Gadget Lab 2.0 are the sparkling lights. I'm going to turn those on right now. So introducing a little color. Now, unfortunately, I think sometimes this starts to look a little pinkish, a little too pinkish, a little too purpley. So I'm going to see if there's a way for me to get, you can get controllers for these kinds of lights to single out certain colors or to create patterns so maybe they, they slowly glow in and glow out. I think that'll also add a little kind of visual interest, a little movement to the videos without doing anything too hijinky or too, uh, too silly. I, I hate when a gadget review is full of just a bunch of panning and dolly shots. You know, like you're not really showing us what you're talking about. You're just sort of monologuing and trying to distract us with really pretty video. I want to show you what we're doing, but I want to make sure we have a visually interesting background while we do it. And so that's, that's sort of the introduction for these. So not only are each of these cubbies better lit, so you can see what's in each cubby, a little uh, bobblehead action there, but then when I've got a phone sort of uh, four or five feet in front of the bookcase, and I focus on the phone, you get those really nice bokeh balls in the background, those little spheres, defocused circles, globes, orbs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I, I think that really makes the frame look a lot prettier a lot more interesting. So that, that was a huge upgrade and, and very cost effective. I think each one of these strands of lights was only around $20. So to, to cover four shelves and then leave my storage cubbies down at the bottom alone um, was a pretty significant upgrade in my opinion for the look of the video without being something that was totally bank breaking. Um, the other major aspect, because um, across the entire office, uh, a big goal was to get rid of the packing blankets. And so uh, if we move over here to where the computer is, in Gadget Lab 1.0, uh, 
across the whole top up here were a bunch of really gnarly, like, cut-up packing blankets so I could sort of uh, treat the upper echo area uh, just before we get to the ceiling. And it, it was totally functional, but it looked terrible, and it also kind of became something of a bug magnet. You had so many floppy layers that were sort of inviting to, like, spiders and stuff that it was a little gross cleaning out Gadget Lab 1.0. So getting rid of the packing blankets, we are now moving on to proper acoustic blankets. These are thicker, more robust, made of uh, uh, more reflective and absorbing materials internally. Uh, definitely more expensive than packing blankets, but whereas before I used to have to have multiple layers of packing blankets to get the attenuation that I wanted, now just one layer of acoustic blanket is up on the wall, and I think it looks a lot nicer, looks a lot cleaner. Also, it's just brighter. So when I've got lights flaring on on this, reflecting off of this, um, the, the office doesn't feel quite so cavernous. It doesn't feel like I'm in my little cave doing my internet videos in my cave. Meh. Um, and one of the things that helped with that was also just changing up how we do lighting. So uh, if, if you look at a lot of YouTube videos, especially the ones that are trying to go for that more cinematic look, uh, one of the ways that you achieve that, or that you achieve that more easily, is by killing sort of general lighting, focusing more on spotlighting, and then making sure that just elements of your background are lit enough so that you don't have to worry about uh, too much noise, increasing your ISO or making your dark video too bright artificially, or brighter artificially. And so I don't have the room to do that well. So I mean, what it would mean is turning off these lights and focusing just one individual spotlight on a product on the table, you know, better than that, <laughs> but in, in something in, that you would light it that way. I've gone for the opposite approach in this lab. So I don't always run these top lights because a lot of our phones are reflective and shiny and I, I hate having to deal with the mirror finishes when I'm shooting video. But I've got a bunch of these like crappy dorm room lights, these three tree lights. You'll see one in the back corner by the window over there too. And then I use this as a main fill. So what I can do very, very easily is crank on all of these lights, wash the entire area in a pretty soft white glow. I actually went and got color calibrated bulbs to make sure that I didn't have too orange a light or too blue a light. And then LEDs in this panel help fill in whatever I might be missing so that the gadget is really well lit. That also helps speed up the whole production aspect because I don't have to wait for certain times of day, I don't have to wait for certain angles of the sun, and I don't have to reset my lighting unless something is directly reflecting. So every single phone setup, every single shot, everything in this office is lit adequately so from any angle I can quickly make an adjustment shoot that clip make another adjustment shoot that clip and I don't have to worry about resetting lighting in between different elements and different bits and different pieces now because space is at a bit more of a premium here than in gadget lab 1.0 uh, I've had to make some changes to how I do live broadcasts so funnily enough uh, and, and I would highly recommend checking one of these out I don't want to bump my tripod here is I, I used to have enough room in Gadget Lab 1.0 to move this whole table out, and I had a tree, a lighting tree, behind this desk for whenever I was doing podcasts and live broadcasts. I don't have that anymore, so what I had to do was go with a really stinking powerful work lamp. And so this is a Snap-on Tools uh, LED work lamp, and it's crazy bright. And depending on where you shop it, I think you can pick it up for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, somewhere in that ballpark. And if I flick it on here, I can't even look at it when I turn it on. It just completely changes the lighting aspect of this corner of the room. And I can't point it directly at me. It's way too bright. I mean, it just it hurts my eyes to look at it. But when I'm sitting low, I've got the webcam on me. This light is bouncing up off the ceiling, off the walls. Walls which now have a lighter fabric covering them to help reflect just a little bit more light than the, uh, the, the darker color uh, packing blankets that I used to use. This thing comes in really handy for making sure that I'm well lit for a webcam broadcast. So that was that was also another silly low cost but very effective improvement to this space. And then the rest of this stuff is pretty much what we were using before. Uh, if I move this over here, I'm still on the Samsung NX30. Um, this camera is very quickly dying. I'm getting sensor errors, I'm getting memory card errors. Thankfully, most of what I shoot is very small clips, very small, uh, very short clips, you know, like 20 seconds here, 10 seconds there. So if this bounces a clip, I'm not out a significant amount of media. But we recently recorded a podcast here with TK Bay, and running 20-minute cycles 
over and over and over again. I got a couple frames where the sensor would just wig out and I'd get this rainbow sparkly digitized effect and that was terrible. And then I had one clip that had just shut off after like five minutes. He said, oh, your memory card's too slow. And you're like, no, it's not, because we've been recording video all day. Thanks, Samsung, you suck. So this is another thing that I'm kind of getting a little, I'm a little twitchy about with Samsung, personally. They make fine phones. You guys will probably still be super excited to talk about Galaxy S8. But Samsung totally left us photo enthusiasts high and dry after the NX1. So this mount, these lenses, I mean, I was on board. I was ready to go with Samsung for this experiment because I loved their cameras. And now this is dying. The NX1 is the last camera they put out. I don't want to invest in a dying system anymore. It's time for me to switch. So hopefully in a couple months, what, we're, what, we, what we'll be moving to will be the Panasonic GH5. And when we do that, I very quickly want to move to not only UHD video, but to see if YouTube will start supporting UHD at 60 frames per second. So that way I don't lose people on either side of the equation. Those of you who like super ultra high def video, you'll be happy. And then those of you who liked the faster frame rate for when we were showing off software, responsiveness, the fluidity of the user experience, hopefully you'll be satisfied too. I think what'll happen is for the first couple of videos, they'll launch the UHD and then it'll take a few more before YouTube kicks on or activates the 60 frame per second uh, version of those videos too. And then for audio, we're kind of in the same boat too. I'm using labs a lot more than I used to be. Excuse me. The, you'll see the little, uh, in any video where I'm on camera, usually I'm wearing the little Sennheiser clip mic plugs into an iPhone. Really the only reason why I keep an iPhone around anymore. And then uh, for most of my uh, traditional voiceover, I'm still on the same SM57. Uh, very basic handheld uh, microphone, uh, often used on stage. Uh, I kind of figure if a pair of these microphones is good enough for the President of the United States, then one of these microphones should be perfectly fine for a YouTuber <laughs> like myself. Um, and while this whole area, we've actually moved to a much quieter area. We don't have the same like uh, alleyway where trucks used to drive by during my podcasts and stuff. Um, this is uh, this is still very good at rejecting any noise that's coming from the rest of our condo complex. So uh, a nice little update. I, I mean, it's still a nice little mic, and I'm sticking with this because, you know, it's one of those, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And even for how well-treated this space is, if I were to move to a nicer mic, I think you guys would hear a lot more of this space, and you'd, you'd uh, hear a lot more of the audio impurities happening just in any sort of room converted. And it's one of those things in Southern California, we don't really have the resources to properly gut a, a space like this and build it into the studio we'd want. Because I'd want to tear down the walls and put up different kinds of insulation and float the floor and drop the ceiling and do all kinds of really cool stuff like that. And we don't really have the building permits <laughs> to allow for us to make that kind of move. So folks, this is Gadget Lab 2.0. Thank you so much for uh, supporting this channel, for continuing to watch videos on this channel. Uh, hopefully uh, I can do a few more fun things with not only 360 degree video, but super high definition and faster frame rate video soon. And uh, definitely be on the lookout for future coverage. I've got a few fun things planned for this channel, just some fun accessories. I want to talk about like survival gadgets, things like that. Um, it, here we live in an earthquake prone state, so I definitely want to do a follow up to some of the uh, the accessories that we put in our in our earthquake bag. And then uh, then you can also catch me over on PocketNow.com talking about smartphones, tablets, and wearables, and all the accessories and things that support our mobile data infested lifestyle. You can catch over on the PocketNow YouTube channel. So, folks, thanks again for watching, for checking this out. If you have any questions about how I get work done, drop them in the drop a comment down below this video, and hopefully I can answer a few of them, or maybe it'll inspire me to do another video in the future. It's always kind of nice to get your guys' input. Uh, below this, you can see a bunch of links on how you can support production on this channel, including checking out my book, uh, Take Better Photos, Smartphone Photography for Noobs. Just recently got updated. Uh, several new chapters about advanced technology and more, uh, more tutorials for how to get the effects that you want for portraits or landscapes or macro shots. I got a, the, the whole book got a nice refresh, and if you've purchased it in the past, I definitely recommend going to Amazon and refreshing the book, because you'll get a whole bunch of uh, new content, including new exercises to improve your photography skills. So uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you all on the next video.